New offensive coordinator Andy Kotelnicki is going to be the biggest reason why Penn State football is successful in 2024. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Coaching matters, and it's why Andy Kotelnicki was brought in to replace Mike Yersich. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch each and every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them out all today at NissanUSA.com. Halfway point for spring football season for Penn State. Practice number seven in the books. And I have some other takeaways in the upcoming segments about the offense and the defense specifically, but I got to begin with Andy Kotelnicki and Tom Allen's included in this as well. Coaching matters. I don't want to say above all else because, you know, you need talented players, but coaching is able to amplify it one way or another, right? You can negatively hold back talented players and good coaching, great coaching can take some, you know, players that are above average and turn them into really, really good players here. And Kotal Nicky was able to do that at Kansas. And now he's at Penn State, where he has nothing but an allotment of talent, from a five-star quarterback to a five-star running back to a, another highly talented four-star running back. Julian Fleming, a five-star former wide receiver. Four-star tight ends. It, it, it's all there for Kotal Nicky to work with. Total Nicky just has a, a different command at practice, and, and it's very noticeable. The energy seems very excited to be there. The, the energy is different, and that's something I'm going to focus a, a lot on when, when talking about Total Nicky or in, and Tom Allen included in this conversation, like I said. But the vibe is just different. It's just better. I know it's early in the season, right? The, the team hasn't faced any sort of adversity. There's a lot of uncertainty here. How good could Penn State be, right? Are they going to be 10-2 and two again? Or could they you know, buck that trend a little bit and become 11-1? and 12-0 and 0 is going to be difficult. But again, this Penn State team at least has the belief that can, it can do a lot of things in this Big Ten Conference. And I guess what? They only see that Ohio State is the giant that stands in the way. They probably see them as equals here. But for Kotal Nicky, you can see the practice highlights up here on Locked On Nittany Lions via the YouTube channel. Total Nicky just has a, a different command, a different type of energy. The way that he works with players, the way that he communicates, there's a fun element to it, but there's definitely a, hey, you better be getting better along the way. If you make a mistake, you're responsible for it and go take care of it as well. I like the way that he just, you know, he'll, he'll praise players if they do something right. He'll, he'll he'll also critique them as well, but there's that that fun element to it that it's not so it, it it's it builds a trust it builds trustworthiness because it's not in a serious you know man Kotal Nicky's coming down on me no he's trying to build you up by calling you out in a good way Kotal Nicky that's one part of it right personality of coaching and just from what we've heard about him he enjoys teaching people he likes being a teacher above all else. But then how about the X's and O's part of it, too? The scheme. Total Nicky, from, from what we've seen from his days at Buffalo, his days at Kansas, I talked about him maximizing talent. But a big reason of it is because of his mind. He understands the scheme. It, I, this isn't an opportunity for me to try to dunk on Mike Yurcich and what he couldn't or could have done as his time as Penn State's offensive coordinator. But that was just it. It felt like at times Yursic refused to call plays, refused to run different types of schemes, and that is already on full display from listening to Kotal Nicky speak. Kotal Nicky says, I, we will run whatever it takes to win football games. Like Michigan running the ball 30 plus times against Penn State. I know that's what Wolverine fans like to say and what have you. Or what Illinois did in 2021 where they had seven, eight offensive linemen. Run what works. And Kotal Nicky talked about that. He said that we will have seven, eight offensive linemen out on the football field if that's what it takes to win. We'll run 50 times a game. We'll throw 50 times a game. Whatever it takes. We'll run whatever formations 
that it the on the way to victory because again all is fair in love and war here and all is fair in football for sure so total nikki i think is going to get creative with the offense and that's another thing so penn state's wide receivers are not devoid of talent here why were kansas's wide receivers so effective and they three stars right if you put them on paper julian fleming Andre Lambert Smith, Trey Wallace, the presumed starters here are better than anything Kansas had to offer over the past few seasons when Lance Leipold and Kotal Nicky were running the show out in Kansas together. Now, Kotal Nicky has this talent. So if he's able to get those Kansas wide receivers open, imagine what he can do with the talent here in Happy Valley. And that's the difference. That is the difference. I think they're going to use, I, I hope they would use. I was advocating this, if you go back through all the episodes, that you should, you should use Singleton and Allen together on the football field and get misdirection going. You have one player going one way on a fake counter. You swing it out to the other, Singleton in open field, and watch him work. And now you have a situation, you have a mind who's probably not going to be afraid to do that, who's going to want to do that. Just, just one element of it. And then there's Tom Allen too. I want to include Tom Allen in this. I like the way he coaches. I do. I think I, he's an obsessive communicator. I feel like watching him just work with the players when he's explaining a drill or anything that he's trying to teach, there is nothing left for interpretation when Tom Allen speaks to the defense. So they're not second guessing. They're wondering, you know, Hey coach, what am I doing here? This and that Tom Allen is very clear. He's very direct. And the players listen to him. So that's the thing that Kotal Nicky and Allen have in common. Manny Diaz didn't, you know, obviously didn't have this issue because he led the number one defense. So it's clearly that the defense listened to him here. But when Allen speaks, the players do not budge. They listen. They listen intently. And like I said, there's nothing left for interpretation. I, you know, that's big shoes to fill, right? Number one defense. And you, I, th I think Tom Allen here, with the players that he has available to him, can definitely create a top 10 defense on the Big Ten in, in the nation to go along with that. So Penn State made the right moves at the coordinator spots here. And Kotal Nicky, combined with Tom Allen, I just don't want to leave him out because he he should not be overlooked here. But because the, the defense was not the problem a season ago, it was the offense, and you bring Kotal Nicky in to fix just that. So if the defense is still going to be as strong as it is under Allen, Total Nicky is going to be the reason that Penn State as a group, as a whole, as a team, because the offense was so lacking, lacking, you're only as strong as your weakest link. He is going to build them up. And Penn State can be one of the better teams in the country. I do mean that. We're going to talk about some other takeaways from practice number seven. Quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. There is a quarterback that's been missing from practice back-to-back -back weeks. That's interesting. Let's discuss that on the other side of this break. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking out one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. And just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. How about the North Carolina Tar Heels? They can only be described as an armada. This one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there. And no wonder they've secured a spot in the Sweet 16 this Thursday against Alabama in the NCAA men's basketball tournament. They're a favorite pick by many to make a run for the championship. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop all of them and more right now at NissanUSA.com. That is NissanUSA.com. And today's episode is brought to you by Better Together. Bracket already busted? Are you tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, you cross your fingers, and just hope for the best? Or maybe you're losing on the last leg of your pick em entry. Well, we've got something new for you. Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform. It's not just about playing the game. It's about playing with your friends and not against them. Experience a familiar DFS game with a bit of a social twist. Enhance the camaraderie of watching sports and realize that DFS, like many things, is better when done together. Boost your odds by strategizing in real time. It's proven. Team, teamwork triumphs talent. 
Synergy from working together gives you a better chance of winning than going at it alone. Split a contrast entry and feel connected even when you're apart. It's a way to stay connected with friends in this digital age. Put your group chat to the test and prove yours is the best. Dive into that sense of community meeting and working together with fellow fans of your favorite teams. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun but it's better together. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? You ever have to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming, all of the shouting. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube and now on the free Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And remember to like this episode, share it with friends and family to help this show get in front of more Penn State fans. And let me know in the comments what you think about the coaching changes. And we're going to get into some of those other practice takeaways as they're at the midway point with the spring game being the 15th and final practice that they can have in the spring season. We'll go quarterbacks, talk about the running backs, tight ends, wide receivers, and then go into the defense in the final segment. But starting with the quarterbacks, as far as Drew and Bo Prabula go, everything was status quo with them. I, I didn't see anything that was egregious or you know passes were timely. They were complete spirals, looked nice and clean and smooth, and, and everything looked, like I said, status quo. But this is the second week in a row that Jackson Smullick, redshirt freshman quarterback, and presumably the third quarterback on the depth chart, has been missing. I don't have anything to report other than that. Again, I'm at practice for 10 to 15 minutes observing, and what I am observing, or rather not observing, is Jackson Smullick throwing passes to any wideouts, wide receivers, tight ends, running backs. He wasn't at practice for the what looks to be the second week in a row that, that I've noticed, and I, I don't know what this means, okay? Nobody has uh, reported anything. James Franklin hasn't said anything, and we haven't seen any of the national media talk about uh, Jackson Smollett possibly being out, or if this is just coincidence. Maybe he has a class run a little bit late on Tuesdays in the late afternoon. Don't know, but Jackson Smollett has missed not once, but two practices now in back-to-back -back weeks, in this case, from my point of view. As far as the running backs go, so last uh, last Tuesday, I, I made a point that Catron Allen was absent, at least in the viewing window. He was back, no problem. So there was no you know question. It was there you know injury or anything else, kind of the same thing with class or anything going on. He was there participating in the entire allotment of drills. For wide receivers, everyone looked to be there, available, right? Amari Evans running routes. Yeah, DeAndre Lambert Smith, Liam Clifford, everybody was there. I, I will I will say this in, in the the timing the out routes that we did see Keandre Lambert Smith was one of the first up Julian Fleming behind him and Lambert Smith got some praise from Andy Kotal Nicky he kind of Lambert Smith set the tone in this drill went and hit the out route pretty hard made a nice cut and then a catch as well and Kotal Nicky oh it got his attention if you look at the practice highlights that are posted up here on Locked On Nittany Lions via the YouTube channel. You can see and you can hear what Kotal Nicky's saying, giving praise to Lambert Smith for that route. So it's good to see KLS setting the tone in these practice drills, being one of the, you know, hopefully a leader alongside Julian Fleming and not letting Fleming handle all the dirty work when it comes to being a veteran wide receiver because KLS is here at this point as well. And he's returning to Penn State, Julian Fleming, obviously in his first season. But that's a lot to ask of a transfer wide receiver to come in and be the face of the wide receiver room. You would like KLS to step up and be that you know co-leader, if you will, to Julian Fleming. Julian Fleming, same thing. The route running was crisp and clean. He did lose his footing on, on one. After he made the catch, he tried to turn up field, and I guess he just hit a, a wet spot in the grass. Not entirely sure, but he slipped and fell. Nothing happened. Nothing happened, but it, I find it just the, you know, the one route that I do see from Fleming, and he ends up slipping and falling over. But nothing happened. Just lost some footing there. And then Amari Evans, like I said, Amari Evans, I, 
I mean, eager to see if he will break out this season. Maybe a Liam Clifford takes a step forward, right? There, there's all these wide receivers, and James Franklin brought this up in his post-practice press conference as well, which you can listen to on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. And, and Coach said that talent is not the problem. Talent's not the problem. However, there, there's a lot. There's just a lot of guys, and that's the same thing we heard all of 2023 that there were just a lot of wide receivers and no one that was standing out from the pack. So Julian Fleming comes in, you return everybody aside from Dante Cephas, and nothing has changed according to Franklin. And Franklin's very honest with us. If you ask him the right questions, he will tell you the truth. Sometimes it might be coded a certain way or anything else, but I feel like for the most part, 99% of the time, James Franklin is very honest with the media based on what questions are asked. When he's asked about the wide receivers, he's saying the same thing that he said all of 2023. Hey, the talent is there, but no one is step standing out. No one is stepping up and separating themselves from the pack. So again, are we falling into a similar situation now where the wide receivers, yeah, there's talent, but now are we waiting on Julian Fleming or KLS or Mari Evans or Trey Wallace, right? He mentioned that Trey Wallace losing him for a portion of the season was not good for them. And, and certainly they need him on the football field for a lot of the time and not just some of the time. And then going to tight ends and tight Tyler Warren, of course, you know, it looks like one of the best tight ends in big 10 football probably will be in the nation as well. I know that's high praise and high expectations, but I'm, I'm telling you, he will break Penn state records at the tight end position. If you're looking for the number two tight end on the depth chart, Oh, well, everyone assumes that it's going to be Khalil Dinkin. I am not sold on that. From what I see in these 15-minute viewing windows, Andrew Raplia is intense. He had, I, I like the energy, and you'll notice the common theme here, kind of like with Andy Kotal Nicky. I like the vibe. I like the energy. I like the toughness that he has. A high motor, that goes a long way. He's running through drills you know, pretty consistently here. Andrew Raplia could definitely take over that number two tight end spot and take it away from Khalil Dinkins. I mean, any sort of way. Total Nicky's a tight ends guy. Who's to say that they can't use all three in a variety of ways? So if they're a 2A, 2B, whatever, I think Andrew Raplia is going to see the football field a lot more in 2024. And then don't sleep on Joey Schlaffer. Do not sleep. If you're sleeping on Joey Schlaffer, some of you maybe forgot about him. Redshirt freshman tight end in that same class with Raplia. Raplia was the high profile name, but Schlaffer was quietly inside the top 10 tight end rankings nationally. So him taking the red shirt had nothing to do with a talent issue. Oh, Schlaffer, you know, there's a learning curve. No, it was matter. It was a matter of weight gain because Schlaffer comes in to, you know, low 200s, lower 200s. And as a freshman tight end, and James Franklin's made this point, you're going up against 22, 23 year old senior grown men at the defensive end spot. And you got to block 250 pound, 260 pound players, as opposed to someone that had comparable weights off the edge of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's, that's why a lot of tight ends, typically an offensive lineman typically will red shirt to add that weight because that's important. But now Schlaffer looks bigger. He looks fast. He looks fast as well because he's carrying the added weight very well. I'm not, I'm not advocating or saying that he's going to be, oh, he's competing for the tight the second tight end spot or anything like that. But don't think that he's going to stay off of the field just because he might not get all of this playing time. But he's someone that could pro progressively emerge and just adds a nice element of depth to the tight end room. Now, what about the defense? Abdul Carter's making that position change. Saw him at practice. And I, Dennis Sutton, you know, talk about energy, high motor. That's DDS. What were the takeaways on the defensive side of the football that's coming up next here on Locked On Nittany Lions? Today's episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into an existing TV and it will provide access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. 
Fire TV lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the sports world, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. That is Amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. And remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. And in this final segment, let's talk about the defense. You know, li limited takeaways here, but Seeing the defensive line now, Deny Dennis Sutton in particular. I want to begin with him because Deny Dennis Sutton, high energy, high motor. I've already said that. But Dennis Sutton was not at practice, at least in these two viewing windows, the past couple of weeks here, confirmed by confirmed by Happy Valley Insider.com, Penn State Rivals, and, and DDS, you know, leading the drills, setting the tempo, the pace, and everything. So it was good to see him back at practice, no limitations either. And I I think deny Dennis Sutton is going to have a very strong season in 2024. Sure, he's got big shoes to fill, and Abdul Carter is going to help out with that. But Chop Robinson and Visa Isaac, you would naturally think just because of the talent that there would be a significant drop-off. But when you have a five-star, former five-star and deny Dennis Sutton, and then Abdul Carter, what we've seen him do at the linebacker spot, he's already a gifted pass rusher. He just disrupts plays on defense. That's what he can do. So what's the difference? You move him from linebacker to defensive end, He's just going to be a disruptor at the end of the day. But Deny Dennis Sutton is going to be unblockable at times. He's going to see significant double teams, and then people are going to forget, oh, Abdul Carter's on the other side. But what about Zane Durant? Devon Ellis came back. He came beaming, right? There's this nice veteran depth, this nucleus that Penn State has in the defensive line room. Deny Dennis Sutton could, I, I don't know if I want to say lead the Big Ten in sacks because he's going to see a lot of attention. He's going to get chipped by the tight ends. He's going to be double teamed. The running back's going to come over to help. They're going to, offenses are going to have to scheme around him. But I think if people pay attention closely, watch some of the analytics, see what Pro Football Focus says as well, and deny Dennis Sutton will quietly rise up and you will see him be recognized as an all conference player, maybe even all America. If he plays a full season, Deny Dennis Sutton has all America potential, truly, and will be a future first round pick. And it's nice to have Abdul Carter on the other side of it. So there's DDS, and then there's Carter, who's going to be disrupting quarterback play on the other side. For Carter, now this was something picked up on, a, you know, in a short viewing when you, window, right? See him go through drills a couple of times. And Dion Barnes is particularly working with him closely. It goes Deny Dennis Sutton, and then Abdul Carter, and then a mix of different players going in the rotation of drills, right? But it's good to see them start out in front. For Carter, Barnes is giving him extra attention. Why? Because he hasn't been playing defensive end for a long time. He's been making this switch. Sure, he's been disrupting the, you know, the passer. He's been rushing after the quarterback and linebacker blitzes. However, the, the pass rusher defensive end technique is still going to take some time. And hey, it's only the end of March. Going into early April, you have the spring game all of summer and then going into the fall. So there is plenty of time for Abdul Carter to figure all of this out. But it's not just a matter of, oh, let me just go bull rush the quarterback any which way. There is the technique element to it. So I don't look at this with any sort of concern that, oh, Deion Barnes is coaching up Carter. That's a good thing. And, and I'm glad that's the case. I hope they try to, uh, they, they nitpick, they find a way to critique every little aspect of it so that Abdul Carter does take that next step as just a disruptor on the defensive side of the football, whether that's at linebacker, defensive end, I don't care. But Abdul Carter is going to have a good season as well. Both of them, that dynamic duo on each end of the line of scrimmage. Uh, good, good luck, Big Ten opponent opposing offenses. As for the linebackers in the secondary themselves, seeing them just go through some more disruption drills, Tom Allen really working one-on-one -on -one with the players and, and, go, and what they were doing were simply working on techniques to get around blockers, sh the block shedding, and then going after and taking the football, causing turnovers, causing fumbles. So it's hard to get a gauge as far as what the linebackers and secondary are truly improving on because this is important for them, right? 
to make tackles in the open field, shed blockers, get, you know, get out of the way and get to the ball carrier and then strip the football. But outside of live game action, again, you're having someone who helps at practice just hold a football and you got to swat the ball away. But going past the tackling dummies, you can see this in the practice highlights. But I, I, the speed, you know, everything was normal, <laughs> nothing out of the ordinary. But since the secondary weren't exactly working on pass coverage drills in my viewing area, and the same thing with the linebackers, they weren't doing a lot of tackling, just a lot of block shedding and going after the football to cause a turnover. That's good. They need to perfect that because you want to mirror what Manny Diaz has done so successfully over the past two seasons. Again, they were the number one defense. Tom Allen has to do a lot to at least maintain somewhat of that standard, and that's how you do it. Force turnovers. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lines. Those are the takeaways from practice number seven, the midway point of the 14. You have the 14 regular practices. The 15th is the blue and white game come mid-April here. If you like these conversations around your favorite Penn State sports team, subscribe to this channel on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And let me know in the comments what you think about Penn State football as, they're at, as they are at the halfway point through spring practice. And for more content, around your favorite Penn State teams. Keep it right here on Locked On Nittany Lions. And don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, and now you can find it free on the Fire TV channels app.